Welcome back, folks, to Scripting for Linguists. In this episode, I have this question for us. Is if-else faster than try-accept or try-catch when solving a word search in Python and Julia? In Python, it's called try-accept. In Julia, it's called try-catch. The reason I ask this video now is because in a previous video I released recently, um, a viewer at Schmidi or Schmidi out said you aren't supposed to use try-catch as part of your logic. While on happy path, it comes without overhead. On air path, it is horribly slow. Julia should perform much better if you don't use the try catch. I thought, okay, awesome. Let's give it a shot. That's an empirical question we can answer with a little test. Just make sure everyone's familiar with what we're talking about, right? Uh, in Python, the tradition is to ask for forgiveness rather than permission, rather than to look before you leap. And um, in, starting with Python 3.11, this, these are the release notes from Python 3.11, there's zero cost exceptions are implemented, eliminating the cost of try statements when no exception is raised. Awesome. Here's a Stack Overflow thread uh, asking Python try except versus if else performance. And I found that uh, it depends. The, this is what this respondent, uh, this writer says. The performance of try versus if else depends. Okay. Geeks for geeks.org says the following. They have a little blog post about try except versus if else. Let's just jump down to the bottom of it. They they try. Um, they use try as well as if. Cool. Um, both when it hits the accept branch or not. Anyway, this is what they say. Let's jump down to it right here. From our evaluation, we come to the following conclusion. Uh, if we expect that 99% of the cases of the value of uh, the values of value will not be zero, that, that is if it hits, if it does the try branch, not the accept branch, we can use the try accept approach. It will be faster if the exception really is exceptional. I mean, if there's only rarely exceptions, it'll be faster to do that. If the possibility of value uh, of hitting the accept uh, branch is more than 50%, that's probably better to use if. Okay. So to refresh our memory, uh, in the previous video, I'm, I'm doing the advent of code in December of 2024. Day four had a word search puzzle in which you are trying to find, um, the first part one is you're trying to find the word Xmas, X-M-A-S, in a big grid. This is just a little toy example I'm looking at here. Let me zoom in. So you're trying to find all the Xmases. There's one right there, for example, right? Uh, here's one going down, X, M, A, S. Um, and so the way I implemented it in Python and Julia and Mojo um, varied. So in Julia, I just used the try catch approach. Let me just go, let me jump over to our, to my code here. Let's go to Julia first. So in my original approach, I used a try, catch, bounds error approach. Bounds error is like uh, index error in Python. And so I just let it try to go outside of the boundaries of this 140 character by 140 character grid of a bunch of letters. Let me show you what that grid looks like real quick. We can jump back over to this point. This is my grid that was given to me as input. This grid right here, 140 characters by 140 characters. Big grid. So I would say, hey, try to do this. If you hit a bounds error, meaning you go outside of that grid, then jump down to the catch branch and just return nothing. That was my original way of doing it. And I did that mostly in Python. But like I mentioned in the previous video, because Python um, allows you to do negative indexing on strings, and if you do a negative index, it'll give you the end of the string on the right-hand side of the string. I actually had to use some if else within my, my original Python code. Um, let me jump up to the original code is right in here. So if it was a positive um, index, I just let the try, I, I let the accept branch catch it. But if it was a negative uh, indexing thing, I might go you know, less than zero, then I had to use if to say, no, I don't want you to do that. Because if I did, it would go to the right side of the string. I wanted it to break or to return none. Okay, so that's the original. I renamed it as try in both Julia and um, Python. 
And then with Mojo, actually, I had to use if the whole time, so that there's no changes. There are no changes going to happen here to Mojo, at all. I had to use um, if there. Okay. So what I've done now is in both Julia and Python, I've rewritten that little helper function right there to say if, and I use the if approach. So if this is going to go outside the bounds, return nothing else, just do it. Um, I left the try in there. I simply copied and pasted my previous function and I just left those in there just to show, yeah, this is different. Um, so yeah, we have an if approach this time, same thing in Python, but again, I, just to point out in Julia, I, I had try catch everything, but in Python, I only had try catch negative indexes or excuse me, I had try catch, um, positive indexes. And then I had to do an if else approach with negative indexes anyway. So rewrote it in Python as well as Julia to only use if else. And so let's go ahead and take a look at our results. I did 10 trials each and here are the results in R. So on the left hand side, the first one is Julia version 111.2 using the try approach, the original approach in my previous video. And those are the, those are the same numbers we saw previously. So we're looking at an average, um, a median of about one, um, 19, 119 milliseconds to get through, um, to find, I think it was over 2000 occurrences of Xmas in this 140 by 140 character grid. And then the second column here in blue. Oh yeah. Wow. That's a lot quicker. That is Julia, the same version of Julia, just using this if approach, meaning always say if this, you know, if you're going to be outside the bounds, return nothing. Um, that is a lot quicker. Holy moly. Yeah. And then Mojo wasn't changed. And over here on Python, on the far right of the, the two right columns over here, the, uh, the far right one in green is the original one I, I used in the previous video where I have a try approach with the, um, the positive indexes. And then this one, the second from left here in this yellow is the full if else approach in Python. And they don't change much. There's a little bit of improvement. Um, in fact, we can look at the exact numbers here. Let me zoom in. Down at the bottom left of my screen, we have the, the, the median in milliseconds. So, the original approach using uh, try catch and Julia was averaging, not averaging, but had a median of 119, 119 milliseconds to find the 200,000 plus, um, no, the 2,000 plus X mosses. But when I use the if approach, we're down below eight milliseconds, eight thousandths of a second. Yeah, that's a big improvement. Holy moly. Mojo didn't change. Python is about the same. Um, so the try there is the original approach, but again, we're not comparing apples to apples because I had to use some if with negative indexes in Python to make it work in the first video. But when we use if, it actually gets a little bit slower. See that, it, what, three milliseconds slower, but not a big slow up, but yeah. So I think this is the Pythonic way. I usually use try, except unless you're expecting to have, to hit the accept uh, branch a lot. Um, which I'm not in a 4, 140 by 140 character grid. You'll usually be within that grid. You won't actually hit the, the boundaries and hit the accept clause. So I'm not surprised that it's actually a little bit quicker to use the try approach in Python than the if approach, but holy moly, it must take a long time when it hits the, the catch branch in Julia, because it's way quicker to use the if approach in Julia than the try approach in Julia. So there you have it. Let's go back to our question, our research question. Is if else faster than try accept or try catch when solving a word search in Python and Julia? In Python, it was actually slightly, very slightly slower, three milliseconds slower, right? So, but in Julia, yeah, way faster. Um, I didn't calculate, but I think it was about a 15 factor speed up going from the try catch in Julia to the if else. So I think, uh, at Schmidt or Schmidt out for his comment right there on my video, previous video. I'll leave a link to that video um, in the comment of this or the description of this video. Yeah, please uh, feel free to leave comments for me. I love learning from my viewers and my students. Please uh, leave comments, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching. See you next time.